should employers be concerned about with the new COBRA payment options? So COBRA is one of the more painful things that employers are going through during this national emergency because of the rules that are changed. So I want to frame it up for employers in three basic buckets with the new rule change. The first are the things that are mandatory immediately. The second are things that are mandatory, but you have a little bit of time to get caught up on it. And the third are items where not even a uh, attorneys are sure if they're mandatory, but we suggest as a best practice, the employers do go forward with providing um, the necessary items. So the first, the things that are mandatory are that enrollment deadlines and payment deadlines um, and claim submission deadlines for COBRA have been extended during the what's known as the outbreak period. So the outbreak period is March 1st until 60 days after the national emergency is declared over, which is not now, but if it was um, declared over, for example, on June 30th, then you'd have all of July, all of August. On August 31st, that would be the end of the outbreak period. So that would be March 1st to August 31st. The reason that time period is important because all deadlines are suspended and so that clock is completely frozen those all count as zero days so for example if i terminate my employment at the end of january all of february is used up i have normally 60 days to enroll in cobra all of february is used up that's 29 days so i still have 31 days left to enroll in cobra as of march 1 when the outbreak period starts so during that entire time, all the way to August 31st, that counts as zero days. So when I started the outbreak period with 31 days left to enroll, I end with 31 days left to enroll. So I have all of September plus one day in October to enroll in COBRA. It's an extremely long time. It's a big burden on employers, but they have to know that that is the deadline. The second thing about that deadline is, if I wanted to enroll, I can tell you that I'm going to enroll. I do enroll on time, but I don't have to make any payments. Normally, I have 45 days to make my very first payment. So instead, I skip my payment in March. I skip my payment in April. I skip my payments all the way through August. Well, I still have 45 days because I never made my first payment. I still have my whole deadline because zero days have passed during the outbreak period. So I have 45 days after the out outbreak period is over to send in my first payment. The good news for employers um, is that at least I have to catch up on all of those months. Employers do not have to pay my COBRA claims until all of those, all those payments are caught up. So those are what's mandatory. Employers have no choice but to give these extensions. The second thing is, um, Mandatory, but there's time. So the IRS is providing a lot of relief. If employers normally need to provide notices about COBRA rights within a certain time frame during the outbreak period, if the employer forgets to send out the notices, doesn't send out the notices, doesn't know what to even put in these notices, it's okay. You will not incur any statutory penalty, but um, that's not great. I, we still recommend that you send out the notices during the time frame as if there is no outbreak period. So do your part as an employer to make sure that your, your diligence is, is done. On the third item where we said, okay, is it even required? There are questions about whether employers are supposed to tell all participants, all COBRA enrollees, or all COBRA qualified uh, beneficiaries about the extended deadlines. So we get asked, do I have to do it? It's not clear whether you have to do it, but um, you know the DOL really cares about fair disclosure. So we highly recommend that employers provide some sort of plain language communication. It could be email. It could be anything that will work for your employees. Just tell them that um, for COBRA participants, COBRA um, eligible in employees or individuals, you may have extended time to enroll. And if you have difficulty making your COBRA payments, you may have time to have addition to send in your payments. We will not terminate your COBRA coverage if you do not send in the payments. You have this amount of time 
to send it in and you will be reinstated or your coverage will be you know, reactivated. But we will not pay your claims until you are caught up on payments. So something as simple and not legalese as that will totally work. So we definitely recommend that because employers want to try to in, um, avoid claims of interference with COBRA rights. So those are the three things we want our, our clients to, to keep in mind as they think about these rules. Do returning furloughed employees just pick up where they left off? And how does all that work? A furloughed employee, as far as ERISA and benefits is concerned, is an employee where, who's maintaining the employment relationship. So there's no termination, there's no actual layoff where there's complete severance of the employment relationship. So it's very important. So when you have a furloughed employee, they're just scheduled for zero hours instead of their regular hours, but they're still your employee. When the employees come back, those furloughed employees come back into the office, they were never terminated in the first place, so there's no reason to rehire them. It's fair to allow those furloughed employees to have new uh, enrollment period because maybe they have changed circumstances. Maybe they come back and everyone has to take a reduced pay schedule. Maybe people have to, instead of working their normal 40 hours, have to work 30 hours so they would still be benefits eligible but um, then their portion of premiums might be a little bit more expensive. So it would be fair to give them a new enrollment opportunity to change their plan benefits if, if that makes sense for them.